Um, next up is uh, one of the best product design uh, person I know is Marco Attisari from Nokia. It's good to have you back, Marco. Very good to be here. Thanks. It is a real joy to be back here in Paris and to be back at Le Web. Uh, it never fails to amaze me how Geraldine and uh, Loic gather a group of interesting people here uh, every year, people that are having a positive impact on the world. I'd like to start a little bit further back and further away. In Kyoto. This photo was taken 10 years ago uh, in Kyoto. It was on the day I met Loic for the first time. We were walking, our host was uh, Joey Ito, uh, currently the head of the MIT Med Media Lab, then an entrepreneur. And he was taking us on a walking tour of the gardens and the temples of Kyoto. And we landed in this place, Joey took this photograph, and on the map there we sat with a monk, who had a mobile phone, but we sat on, on the map there and we just watched how the outside environment came in. And we felt a very, very real connection to the environment around us. And as the theme of this year's Le Web is the Internet of Things, I'd like to use that as a point of reflection when we go forward. Now, the Internet back then was something that you used in particular places on a stationary PC. Now the Internet is everywhere around us on a multitude of devices, most notably our smartphones, with a bunch of sensors making them aware and connected to the world around them. Yet what's more interesting to me is as we move forward from a world where there are one, two, three, four, depends who you ask, screens out there, to an internet of 10, 20, 30, 40 smaller things that are on, in, around us, that are all connected to the internet. And there I think we need to ask ourselves questions about what kind of world we want to design and what the experiences and interactions with those products are like. If we look at smartphones today and uh, capacitive touchscreen and touchscreen interfaces, those experiences are immersive. They require a lot of our attention. You can walk around here and see the cafes in Paris, and you'll see couples. Um, it, romantically, they're sitting, pinching and zooming at their devices, heads down. In the studio, we like to say that our goal is to design experiences and products that allow people to give their head up again, so that they can be more present to the environment, uh, present to each other, and really be there. So what kind of world do we want to have as we go forward is something where the technology allows us to reach each other remotely, but doesn't get in the way of human interaction and in that connection with the environment that we have every day. So that's the first, I think, important shift uh, when you're talking about the Internet of Things. But the other, equally important, is a return to the significance of place. It used to be the case a long time ago when you would only call a place by phone. Hello, operator, please connect to London. Then, a bunch of companies and the industry as a whole, with Nokia at their lead, created the idea of calling a person. So now you could reach a single person and the idea that every single person would have a phone. And this is a critical change, but now as we look at these devices that are increasingly packed with sensors, we know that they are aware and they know where they are. And all of these 10, 20, 30, 40 things that we will have on us, with us, will be located in a place. 
and to take advantage of that, to use location, if you like, as a lens for our activities and the experiences we make, you need a digital model of the real world. And that's what we're building with what, what we have just recently announced as the Here Location Cloud. So we started together through acquisitions 30 years ago, building this kind of real-time digital abstraction of the world. We call it Here. And to make something that is real-time, that is accurate, constantly updating, and that's a map that's calculated for you personally, requires a great deal of work. It requires not only industrial work, which means cars driving around making uh, 3D point cloud uh, mappings of the entire world. It requires partnering with other companies, be that in our case FedEx, UPS, we have data coming in. In fact, we have 12 billion data points a month coming back that are updating our maps. Uh, constantly. Not only that, you need a multitude of data sources from, you, from which you build that model. We have over 80,000 sources that we need to then unify into one model of the real world. But that, it doesn't stop with the industrial logic. Equally very important is the community of users. And this means using constantly the data from users of the Here Cloud be that in mapping or navigation or um, public transport applications, and using that data to enhance and improve the quality of the maps. So this means the perennial example of watching where people are driving to indicate where new roads are being mapped that may have not been caught by industrial methods. The community is also in increasingly important for getting accurate maps in other areas beyond densely populated urban areas. We have map creator tools available for over 110 countries. The key point, however, about a here location cloud, for it to constantly feed on itself, get better data, get more accurate, and then deliver better experiences, is that it goes horizontal. And we've recently announced that the here cloud will be available across platforms starting with here.com with any modern browser, the Here app in, on iOS for iPhone and iPad, as well as an Android developer kit for OEMs willing, wishing to develop uh, experiences on top of the Here cloud, as well as uh, tight integration into the Firefox OS. So I urge all of you that are interested in a quality mapping experience to try these products and feedback on those. We still offer the peak experience of location and the most integrated experience of location on Nokia Lumia products running Windows Phone. So we often think about location as something that's very app siloed. But in fact, the distinction between the apps and the platform and the use of location in making any experience better is blurring constantly. So we think about it more as location being a lens for the activities we do. There are things that we need to do. We offer location. You can use it in any, any app or context. In this case, you're seeing pictures from uh, navigation, uh, public transport, where you can even see the last mile once you've left public, public transport where you go. And then integrating location data and data from this digital abstraction of reality into the viewfinder with city lens. So essentially, using the camera as an interface into the real world, seeing what, what's available around you, then you can even freeze the frame, um, look down, and continue using it there. So this goal to make experiences that connect us with the world around us, that don't separate us from that, experience that that can be easily personalized. In the case of these applications, you can pin places, bus stops, anything you like to the start screens, so you don't have to tunnel deep into applications, as well as making experiences that are more heads up, are allowing us to be present to the environment, live tiles that automatically update with the relevant information about locations. Those have always been critical to the products that we make. 
But that's not all, and I'd like to dive a little bit de deeper into how we think in the design studio about the products we make and why we make them the way we do. Now, we're a very international design studio, but in some sense, we are very much a product of Finland and a product of Northern Europe. And that shows in some of the way we approach design. One uh, important figure for me personally in the studio is uh, the Grand Finnish architect Alvar Aalto. Aalto was known as an architect of monumental scale, as well as uh, smaller proportions and a product designer. And this is a, one of his most famous de designs, the Glass Savoy Vase. Alvar Aalto had a saying that the role of the architect and designer is to give a gentler structure to life. And the way I interpret that is that you focus on those things that people do 50 to 100 times a day, and you make them better, rather than looking at uh, weird new features allowing you to do something n never before possible. But there's a great innovation to be done in the refinement of those things that people do every day and polishing those and making those better. How does it play out then in the design of the latest Nokia Lumia family of smartphones. Now, I think the first is a commitment to purity, to make products that are pure. I think this shows well using the 920 as an example. You take away everything unnecessary until you're left with only the essential. In this case, the product is made out of two pieces, glass flowing in. This means that then you pay attention to every single detail, the ceramic keys, speaker detailing, and you make them perfect. The other important goal we have is to make products that are built better. And uh, this means that they're solid, engineered to stand the test. You can feel free to take them outside. The color is inherently colored polymer, so if it scratches, it ages beautifully, these kinds of things. Deep collaboration between engineering and design. then our products are human, never cold. That shows partly in color, but it also shows in how the products feel in the hand. And while they're human and organic and feel organic, more natural, they're always advanced and they have the latest uh, technology. In this case, in those areas where we want to do something better, it's not interesting to do something different. It's interesting to do something meaningfully better. And in those areas, particularly photography, in the case of the pure view in the 920, optical image stabilization, blur-free blur, blur -free photographs in low light, and really getting that end-to-end -end experience right. The Windows Phone interface itself and the quality of the screen, the degree that it's personalizable and you can make it your own over time above other operating systems. Simple connectivity, taking um, the 920 to charge it, you just lay it on the table on the charging pad. So wireless charging, or with music, just touching a speaker to connect it, as here. Now, these are the principles that led us to the design of the 920 and the 820. But we knew that this wasn't all. There was more to do. And now it's time to show you something completely new. It is my real joy to introduce the new member of the Nokia Lumia family, the Nokia Lumia 620. We knew that there was shape in the portfolio so for something that was more compact. So something that fit beautifully in the palm of the hand, but still packed uh, the camera, a solid camera, and the camera experiences and the signature apps that Nokia products are known for. And as well, we wanted something that 
would take our pure color story and just give it a burst of playfulness, mix it up a little bit. And that's what we've done with the 620. So let me talk you through the shape, the screen, and the colors to start off with. Now here, you see the full family. What's clear is that in the 620, as we go from larger screens down to smaller screens, we're also softening the roundness and radius of the product. I think it's an expression that is very true to our principle of making pure products. So if you look at the back, a beautiful cup design, cut off with the uh, glass, every single detail. In this case, I'd like to point out particularly the especially loud speaker on the back. Then the screen, 3.8 inches in a very tight, compact footprint, clear black display with um, ambient light sensors and algorithms allowing extremely good outdoor readability for websites or videos. So very good performance in light outdoors. And then the color. You've noticed the lime green. So our color approach has been very consequent with the Lumia family to date, with our C, M, Y, K colors. Pure process colors, C for cyan, M for magenta, Y for yellow. Introduce that now with the 920. K, black, white. But with the 620, we wanted to introduce some bold blends. And this is how we do it. Basically, we use a te technique, a dual shot application of color, where we have an opaque layer of color underneath and then a translucent layer above. In this case, yellow underneath, cyan on top, which gives us lime green. And it doesn't stop with that mix. We also have another combination, which is orange. And you can see from the front footprint, and then the kind of depth effect, if you um, look at these products and the, how the light plays on the products, uh, you can see that there's something magical underneath. You may not even understand how it's made, but this is very important for us. Overall, in terms of the color story, we're offering the product in seven colors with exchangeable uh, shells, the lime green and the orange I already said, and then the CMYK plus white in both gloss and then matte finishes depending on color. In addition to running the full Windows Phone 8 experience with start screen, very responsive, it has a very fast camera and includes the experiences that people have come to expect from the Nokia Lumia range. Smart shoot, cinemagraph, smart shoot allowing you to fix uh, facial expressions if you like, cinemagraph allowing you to make short uh, animations of photographs in a very playful, fun, quick, easy way, as well as city lens, which I mentioned previously, allowing to, you to use the viewfinder of the camera as a way to discover things about your environment in a very easy way. And finally, related to those things we need to do every day, which is connectivity and connecting, the Lumia 620 comes with NFC, so that means for listening to music, you just touch a speaker to continue playing that's NFC enabled. In fact, Nokia Music comes with the 620, that's free streaming, channel and also offline use music service that is hard to beat in the market, which creates personalized channels based on your preferences. So that's it, the Nokia Lumia 620. I think the experiences, our experience, everyday experience of the real world is already being shaped by this internet of small things. These things that are increasingly compact, colorful, made personal, 
things much like the Nokia Lumia 620. The studio we like to say, it's the most fun for your money. And for all of you here, uh, first in the world, I urge you to go during the break, visit and have an experience of the Lumia 620. Please just walk out of here and follow the colors. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marco. I, I like that you launch a phone on the web stage. That's not, that's All right. not bad. Marco, do you um, tell me, the, uh, when do you think we will actually have that level of information outside from, of our pocket, outside of a phone, actually? Like in Google Glass or in you know, anything else than a phone? Like when do you think the Internet of Things will actually be a reality? I think you're seeing what you're seeing now is the startups um, here in, are, are in the for, forefront. I think the key thing is to establish things that do one or two or three things and do them extremely well. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, for that, but we have these, um, these products here today. I mean, one, one thing I should say. Can I? Can yes, I? please take a look. <laughs> So one thing knew, uh, we, we which may be of interest uh, to the journalists in the audience, the price of the Lumia 620 is 249 US dollars without taxes and subsidies, 190 euros. And uh, it'll be shipping in January with APAC, Middle East, and Africa running first, and Europe and other markets following soon thereafter. Thank you, Marco. Ah. <laughs> it's Thank very you. nice. It's great to have you Cheers. back with us. Um, and it's a beautiful, beautiful fun. I wish you a lot of success with it.